Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Let's look now at another interesting set of virtues and vices. Uh, we're not going to get to the anger one, unfortunately, but I, I, I have resources if you're really interested in that because I don't want to work on that. Um, ambitious. What is that drive? There are something called philotimia, which means love of honor. Is that all that we mean when we say somebody is ambitious, that they just desire honor? What do we think of it as being? That they actually want to get their means. So whatever it is. Yeah. We're looking for success. We're looking for status. Um, sometimes we substitute respect for the word honor. I think that is, you know, unless you're a very traditional person, you don't often talk about honor. You probably talk more about respect or esteem or a few other things. Now, what's really interesting about this particular set of virtues and vices, Aristotle actually says in his culture, there is no term for the, for the mean. That people talk about some people being too ambitious and other people not being ambitious enough. And the Greek society that he lived in was a real go-getter society. These people were very interested in status and prestige and you know, advancing and, and power and that sort of stuff. Comparing themselves to other people. I guess you know this would also be about you know comparing yourself to other people, not just in terms of like job position or things like that, but also like what you have, you know, who you know, all those sorts of things. Reputation. And he says that the two extremes, in some sense, kind of vie for the center. That um, a lot of people will will call somebody. Ambitious, and sometimes they mean it as a bad thing, sometimes they mean it as a good thing. Sometimes they call the middle part being ambitious, and sometimes they call the middle part being unambitious. You know? um, do you think this is the case still for us today? That we don't really have a good way of talking about people who are motivated to the right extent when it comes to these sorts of desires and drives, looking for status, reputation, respect, how other people see them. Do we have a, a term that we use for people who are just right? Term. What is it? Hustle. Hustler. A hustler. So they're just, they're just right? It's or are they more on this end? Uh, the hustler what do you think? about is one that like, puts in hope at the time and effort and slowly gains what he wants and then eventually it just compounds and gets it. So. Okay. So they're not like cutting corners, no. trying to, you know, people who want to attain immediate celebrity would be over here. Okay. I'm going to post a YouTube video of me doing something crazy and then I'll have my own TV show. There are people who think that, right? That's why there's a lot of crazy YouTube videos out there that you can find. And they often are quite funny. That's very different than building something up over time. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. You let's let's actually let's use that. 
person who's genuinely a hustler in this sense, somebody who's building uh, reputation, you, you have to build reputation by actually doing something that other people value. And it's got to be something sustainable, doesn't it? So it's got to be part of who you are. And if you really want other people's approval or you know, respect or things like that too much, you won't do that, will you? You will cut corners. You will sacrifice other things to, to that good. Um, what about on this end? Are, are there people in our society who are not ambitious enough, who are not concerned enough about how other people see them, about respect, position, those sorts of things. Do you think so? Yeah. The lazy ones or the dropouts? Yeah, some people may, may be this way just because they'd rather just like, you know, yeah, lay, lay on the couch and watch TV all day, right? Um, and some people may be this way. They, they may be the dreamers, the people who say, yeah, I got this big plan, but nothing, they never do. They don't take any of the steps that are, that are required in order to, to be successful, right? The, the person who's here ought to be successful unless something comes along to really screw things up. Um, there could be other people who just see themselves as unworthy of that, like with the pleasure one. You know, I'm, I'm never going to amount to anything, so why should I, why should I even try? Just let me, you know, do what I, what I do. Um, could there other be, could there be other modes of, of this sort of? Just going through the phases. So going to school not because you want to, but because it's just Ah, yeah. The people who do things that are actually good for them, which could be part of building uh, you know, a repertoire of skills, contacts, all those sorts of things, but they don't really, their heart's not in it, and they have no idea why they're doing it. I, in the, I don't see that much here at Marist. I've seen that at some other places where I've taught, where the students have this idea that, I, I, I just gotta make it into college and then things are gonna like fall into place, and they have no idea what they're doing. They have no, no idea why they ought to be there. And if you don't have any idea why they ought to be there, they can't have any idea about what to get out of it, what to, what to do, what to, you know, uh, what steps to take to assure that they're actually going to be successful. Really, you know, what Aristotle is talking about here in terms of right ambition is a matter of assuring that you are going to be successful um, and working to be successful. This person over here wants to be successful, wants to be acknowledged by everybody without necessarily putting in the work. The person over here might actually do a lot of work, but they, for one reason or another, are not going to, um, things aren't going to fall in place. You know, there are some people actually, too, who, aren't there, who kind of um, trip themselves up. You see them working, but they always manage to sort of uh, derail themselves whenever, whenever it comes to a really important juncture where they're, they're going to do the presentation where somebody might, might actually see them and then give them some what Aristotle's calling honor. Have you seen people like that? They might be over here. They really are not motivated by, by ambition enough. What would be some other signs of somebody here in the middle, do you think? In our culture. In Aristotle's culture, you know, be the guys out there trying to get political office. It was easy to get political office back then. There were a lot of different positions. Um, putting on big dinner parties sometimes, you know, uh, because that would be part of how you would make contacts. What, what do we do? If you want, let's think about it this way. As a student, if you actually have right ambition, the right amount of wanting to be, you know, wanting to have approval from other people, wanting to be respected by other people, um, what would that look like for you guys? How would you approach your teachers?
you guys want to be valued by us, don't you? At least in terms of grades. But I think a lot of you actually care about what we think. At least some of, some of your professors. These the professors that you actually think have anything on the ball. Um, maybe your, ma your major professors. Um, what sort of things would be characteristic of your, your attitude towards them? The way you make decisions? Think about assignments. Go ahead. Like respectful. Yeah, I think that's, that's part of it. Um, think about assignments. Though. When you put in work on assignments, are you just trying to like put in all the bells and whistles to, to impress somebody? Or are you trying to produce solid work? Solid work impresses people, at least if those people have anything on the ball. I know some of your professors may, you know, be the other kind of, nobody gets an A, you know. Uh, that's, that's, that's actually a problem from Aristotle's perspective, too. Right? Showing up on time, yeah, that, that's important. I think that goes in with being respectful, doesn't it? Um, now, what about um, things that you do for yourself? Going to office hours so you can understand stuff you probably don't understand. Yeah. yeah. Um, professors are always surprised when students show up at office hours because so few students do. Um, but people are usually pleasantly surprised. Um, what else? What are some things, what are some steps that you're taking for yourself here at Marist? besides how you interact with professors to assure that you're going to be successful. What are some things that you do? Okay, so that goes into learning and, and uh, acquiring skills. Are there any other things that you're... Are there any ways you're, you're trying to excel to call attention to yourself? Things that are going to go into your, your resume go out on the job market. Some of you are doing internships, right? That's a smart move. I'm glad that at Marist they're so good about you know, making students do that. That, you know, this is kind of a stretch at this point, isn't it? But that actually could fit into what Aristotle was calling this virtue of right ambition. Um, do you shoot for the flashy internship? that um, you know you may not actually be qualified for? Do you sell yourself too short and not go for the internship that you probably are qualified for? Because you guys are you know, pretty smart students. You made it in here, you've made it this far. Do you seek out opportunities that are actually commensurate with your, your abilities and your talents and your potential that are going to be productive for you and also make good contacts for you? That would probably be here. Um, you could then think the same thing about clubs. Any of you participate in clubs, activities, those sorts of things. Um, they're not just resume builders, right? If, if all you're doing is like stuffing your resume, that's over here. If you're really doing things because that is part of who you are and you are able to contribute something, and you do want other people to like see that and say, yeah, that, that person is a good contributor. You may be over here instead. Um, maybe being a team player is kind of like this as well. Again, some people just don't care about that sort of thing. And Aristotle thinks that's a deficit. What do you guys think? Do you, do you agree with Aristotle on, on this, that there's sort of a, a mean position? Or do you think maybe it's better to be like, you know, the person over here? What do you guys think? That, that'll, that'll be our closing thing. Because I've already held, held you over like two minutes extra, unfortunately. What's your, what's your gut feeling? You don't want to be this, right? Does anybody in here want to be this? So which, which should you be? Yeah. Well, the only problem with unambitiousness, a lot of times some people that choose that side, they, have, they may come out to just be lazy. They don't want to actually apply that <laughs> That's stuff. true. Yeah. So yeah, there is a need. I, don't, I wouldn't know what the term to call it, but it's just, if you're unambitious, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's almost like what you need or your intent by it. Yeah. So if you are just don't want to apply yourself, that's a problem. I don't know you guys very well because, you know, this is early in the semester. Uh, I don't. I, I, I have a hard time picturing any of you as lazy. So I don't think any of you fit in here. 
or see yourself as fitting in here. Do you see yourself as fitting in here? Do you want to? Do you see this as a good thing? Yes? All right, we'll leave, we'll leave off there. 